meeting for them. Um, if anybody does want to speak, but doesn't want to be as part of the recording, just let me know and I'll stop and pause the recording during that. Um, and I'll even edit out your, your request to, to not be included. Um, refreshments will be served afterwards in your own kitchen, uh, break room, convenience store, depending on where you are. So please help yourself there. It's also entirely possible to make these virtual events try to seem too real. Um, now I'd like to introduce a coworker of mine, a member of our very diverse group of IT workers, none of which I think has ever actually studied computer science. Uh, <laughs> Minister James Evans, who will lead us off with a prayer. And as my dad is a Christian, I think it's appropriate to follow that tradition on, on this occasion, even though we're a very diverse group here. So, James. All right. Well, thank you, Blue Jay, uh, for allowing me to be a part of this and uh, to help you out with this today. Um, what I'd like to do, uh, Blue Jay mentioned we would open in prayer. What I'd like to do is um, let me do a scripture reading, and then I will lead that into a time of prayer. And then Blue Jay is going to take over from there. I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 40, uh, verses 28 through 31. It says, do you not know? Have you not heard? Yahweh is the everlasting God, the creator of the whole earth. He never grows faint or weary. There is no limit to his understanding. He gives strength to the weary and strengthens the powerless. Youth, youth may faint and grow weary, and young men may stumble and fall. But those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. Their strength. Their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Father, we come to you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we lift up this time to you. We, Father, we bring this time to you that it would be an honor to you, that it would bring glory to you, and it would be a blessing for those who are involved here today. Uh, and it would be also honoring to your, your child, your servant, Vince Adamant. And Father God, we just remember that you are the God who strengthens us. And I, I know uh, just a little bit that I've got to know Blue Jay over the years and, and to, uh, to know of his father through Blue Jay. Um, I can say that he was a man who continued to walk forward in his strength and the strength that is received by you. And we celebrate this day today. We celebrate his life and we celebrate all of what he uh, had uh, not only done in his life, but all that he has done that would impact the many lives to come. And again, we ask, Lord God, that this would be a blessing, would be an honor, and would bring glory to you. And we pray this all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, James. I wrestled with what I would say here. And it seems like I could either say very little or I could end up going on for hours. I'll try to err on the side of brevity, um, just make it easy. One thing that I've said often is that my dad was the best dad that I ever had. Partly this was in jest, as I only ever had, had one dad, but I also meant it as well, because he and, and or mom were always there for me. And I never really lacked for anything. For most of my life, I knew him as a parent, my daddy, somebody I looked up to, somebody who made me eat my vegetables. He taught me many things, both explicitly and by example. For example, he and mom always worked together around the house, doing the, the house cleaning, the shopping, the yard work, whatever. So teamwork and, and equality was something that they both demonstrated to me. We knew that he had a part in World War II, but that was about all we knew until around 2004. After watching the dedication of the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C. on TV, he finally began to tell about his experiences in the war. And oh boy, what stories he had. I threatened to start videotaping him, but instead he sat down at his computer and wrote it all down. I learned what a Bangalore torpedo was. It's a long stick with a piece of dynamite on the end of it. On an amphibious invasion, my dad had the job of running off the boat sticking that dynamite under the barbed wire to blow a path for the rest of the troops to go through. Not exactly what you think about someone who's been known for driving sensible cars and making you do your homework and go to bed on time. And a flamethrower too. Now, how cool is that? 
One story he always told was when he first went overseas to join the war. He was in Iran, Northern Africa, and with Christmas of that year being on a Monday, he went to church on Sunday, he went to midnight mass, he went to church on Christmas day, and he said he prayed on his knees to God. They gave me this rifle, told me to kill or get killed. I don't know where I'm going, watch over me, guide me. From there, he spent two years in actual combat, fighting as an infantryman. One of those guys on the front lines in a foxhole with a helmet and a rifle, and just hoping that next shell doesn't land here. And he got through all that with hardly a scratch. So I believe God was watching over him and continued to do so. And I'm sure God has taken good care of him now. For those of you with older parents, I'll tell you that the role reversal you hear about is very real. Over the last 10 years or so, there was a mostly gradual transition between us. 2014 was a difficult year with a heart surgery involved. But it occurred to me that one thing I never saw in my dad was fear. There were times when he had to make a treatment decision or some other difficult call. And what I saw was careful consideration, asking him questions and asking for advice, but not fear. I don't think I ever remember seeing him afraid. Just let's do what we gotta do. Speaking of fear, my dad made a decision that in our society takes a lot of courage. He made his own decision to stop driving, something that I'm eternally grateful for because in so many families that goes badly. I'll show some pictures here in a moment. I didn't find a lot of them of my dad just by himself. Most of them showed him with other people and he always left a, an impression. As an example, the other day I called the funeral home in Florida where my parents had made arrangements and as soon as I identified who I was calling about, the person there remembered them. I didn't even have to spell the name. You know how, how important that is. She remembered them like they were just there yesterday and not almost 28 years ago. So I know my dad touched a lot of lives and we can see 17 of them right here. Um, he made a connection with so many people. He passed away on December 21st the winter solstice. And it's very easy to see signs and omens and what is probably a coincidence. The winter solstice is our shortest, darkest day and signals the start of winter, which is a very hard time for many. But I choose to see that as a sign with the days starting to get longer now and brighter. I choose to see it as a sign that we will get through this dark time, recover from this loss, even as we never forget Vince Adamitz. And I'll run through these pictures over here. Give me one moment. And this is, some of these pictures were from a autobiography that he wrote some time back. This was him at age 12. And with his four siblings there, he's on the left. He was working with rifles before he went into the army. So I guess he had a little bit of experience there. There he is reading his draft notice. His army induction picture. That's their engagement picture. I understand my mom wanted to get married before my dad went off to war. But he said, no, he said, I'm going off to war. I don't know what I'm gonna be like when I come back. I don't know if I'm coming back. So he didn't wanna get married before he went. There's a picture of him when he was in Italy, just back in off the front lines. That's his discharge picture. And there they are married. It wasn't but three weeks from when he was discharged and got home that they were married on January 12th. There he is with his first car. Quite a car there. Going through some stuff over here, I found where he had saved the first check that he had ever written. Check number one, written to cover a deposit on the first house he bought. These are some pictures we had from 
when we were in Sudbury, Massachusetts, had a lot of good times around that swimming pool. And it was also on a bowling team up there. That was candle pin bowling, not what you see around here. It was Christmas after they moved to Florida. After my mom died, my dad sold the place that they had on the beach and fixed up a little house for himself. Shangri-La, we called it. He was also a volunteer at the Flagler Hospital. He continued doing that. There he is on a visit up to Garfield with his siblings. There he is with a good friend of ours, Dot Waltrip. She ran the flight school where I was an instructor. One time we were going through a store, and I think it was around Easter time, and we saw these cute little rabbits and thought, oh, let's get one. And I said, well, they're cheap, so let's get two. Well, that was a little bit of a mistake because by the time we got out to the car, we had four and rabbits being rabbits. By the time we got home, we had eight. And you kind of see the result there. He could be surprised at times, but it was good. He always liked chocolate eclairs. There was the groundbreaking on the house here, which you see in, in my background. He liked ice cream too. That was always a favorite of his, even right all the way through. Wasn't above clowning around a bit either. This was Christmas 2006. We had most of the family here. Christmas dinner. We did our own version of the 12 days of Christmas, lyrics on request. In 2013, he went on an honor flight. I accompanied him on that as, as a guardian, which is the shirt I'm wearing today. And as part of that, he got a letter from a school kid here in Lawrence. Um, name was Sandy, asking him to come talk to his her class about World War II. We got in touch with the teacher and set it up and it wasn't just the class, it was the whole school. He came and told some of his stories there to the kids. And that's also available on YouTube, I've got it posted. 2014 was that difficult year. He spent a good bit of time uh, in rehab and these are a couple of the therapists that he made that connection with. I mentioned he made his decision not to, to drive anymore and there's the proof of it there. In 2016, he was awarded a Quilt of Valor. There's an organization that makes quilts and gives them to veterans. Um, so that's what was going on there. And there he is with his three kids. Christmas of 2018 at Langston Place where he was a resident. And his 96th birthday. Y'all might have seen that picture on my website. And I would oftentimes have him over here at the house where he could visit with Fluffy and hang out a bit. This was his birthday last year, his last birthday. I couldn't be there for that, but they at least sent me a picture. And it's not really a, a happy picture, but that is the last picture that I got of him. Um, last year, I was granted a compassionate visit with him uh, right around Thanksgiving, and I was able to capture that picture. So. With all that, um, Alice, I believe you said you wanted to have a little say. Uh, click your mute button, Alice. You're still muted. That's and it looks like the, the screen's froze. <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead if you'd like to, to speak. Okay, you can hear me? Yep, I got you now. Because my screen is frozen. Yeah, you, you can talk. All right. Please. My husband died nearly seven years ago. 
And I would often wonder, after 45 years, how could he not be here? So after 97 years, I wonder, struggling with reality, how could my dad not be here? But where he is now is truly home, home where he originated in the heart of God. God who imagined him and saw that he came into existence. The best dad, loving, brave, tough, generous, smart, funny, a man after God's own heart, a man of faith and redeeming faith in Jesus. He left me a spiritual legacy of God will provide. He showed me a bit of what God is like and that he can be trusted. My dad modeled this truth in his own providing and caring for his family. So we can see evidence of God in each other. When times get tough and hard and it's hard to trust, and I try to prove God untrue, I hear dad say, as he did so often, I am in God's hands. And so we are, all of us. Thanks, dad. From God's word, I has not seen, nor ear not heard, all that God has prepared for those who love him. Thanks again, dad. Thanks, Alice. Kelly, would you like to say anything? Okay. Yeah, I'll throw the floor open if anybody else would like to have a say. Just unmute yourself and dive in there. Tom. It's Kathy. Thank you. you did such a, yeah. this is so wonderful. It brings back so many wonderful memories. Uh, I have to call you Tom. I still see you as my little baby cousin. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I talk to your dad every, every week. Your dad and I would talk and I, I miss him so much. I miss him so much. He always made me laugh. And this is a wonderful tribute to him. So Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lou J. Yep. Just want to let yeah. everybody know what great neighbors you were. You were like our family. It was just Kim and me. And um, I remember all the times we had together and how your dad took the training wheels off of Kim's bicycles because she was so frustrated. And was got up, threw that bike down, got back up, and started riding in the cul de sac. I remember the times we, especially me, came down to that beautiful house of yours. And I remember our time going to Carowinds, where he and I would sit on the bench and let the kids ride the rides. It was a joyous time. He's a blessed person, and you are blessed to have known him. I think we are all blessed to, to have known them. Yep. Anybody else? Uh, yeah. Oh, someone's going. Go ahead. Didn't quite catch who that was, but apparently they went up back on mute for some reason. Okay, well, I'm really glad you did this. And I do call you Tommy, not Blue Jay. <laughs> yeah. I've known you since you were in diapers. Uh, <laughs> but uh, thank you for doing this. You did a great job, Alice. Um, I know how hard that was for you. You did a good job. And um, he always said he was my great uncle. And he was not my great uncle, but he was great. <laughs> so, that's the memory he leaves me with. And um, I remember, um, what was it, East Patterson, the pool in the yard, and all yep. the fun we had yes. Yes. at that time. So um, I have lots of wonderful memories. 
and you had a special dad. And my brother, who is not on here because they're dealing with COVID as well, um, uh, he talks about your dad all the time. And I remember they had their, do you remember the invisible pet they had? Was it a rabbit? I don't know. Bobby Mutel and um, my brother, and they had an invisible pet, and they used to drive you kids crazy with it. So, but um, yeah, um, just glad to be on here. Glad to see all of you and um, thanking you for having your father, <laughs> special man. And I love my aunt too, your mom. Yep. Yeah, very special. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Hey, Blue Jay. Hey. Hey, uh, so for anybody who is on here, I don't know most of you, but uh, I'm Dr. Nick Koss. I'm, uh, I was uh, blessed to, and honored to uh, have uh, Mr. Uh, Vincent as a patient for the last uh, eight, eight or nine years. And, um, you know, he, uh, I, and Blue Jay, thank you so much for uh, inviting uh, me to be a part of this. I really appreciate it. And um, when I first heard when the, the front desk told me what um, that uh, Vincent had gone to be with the Lord, I, I was really taken aback and it was, um, because honestly, I, I always, what, what I'll always remember is when you guys would come in and uh, talk about how, uh, I think he said he was going to live to 108, and you said, you would always come back and say 121. <laughs> yeah, you'd always say he'd survive to 105, yeah. and I updated that with my estimate of 121, since the first time he had his heart worked on, he got 30 years out of it, and then when he was 91, yeah, we did the plumbing, the electrical, and everything else. So I figured it should be good for another 30 years. So, but I was just, uh, I, I just always, uh, that always made me smile. And uh, you guys, I could just tell, had a very special relationship. And um, I, uh, and honestly, when he would say that, I, I just, I was honestly kind of shocked when I heard that he had passed because I, he was just so determined that he was going to live to be that long. And I just thought for sure that you know, he was just going to keep on keeping on. So, um, but uh, I, I feel very blessed to have known him and um, I always enjoyed, I personally love history and uh, I always enjoyed, um, hold on just a second, I got a small child who's climbing. Um, I, I have an almost two year old that just learned to walk and go all over the place. So, um, but I, uh, I always loved his stories and uh, it's, I think uh, he was probably one of the first people that um, that I knew really closely personally that was on the front lines in World War II. And you, know, you always hear about uh, the greatest generation. And, uh, you know, I, I really, you know, your dad, I mean, when I think of the greatest generation, I think of your dad because he was just the guy that he did what he had to do for this country. And he came back and life went back to normal and it wasn't he didn't he didn't expect a hero's welcome he didn't expect anything and uh, it was just the servant's heart and uh, I really believe your dad embodies that spirit of all the veterans from that war and um, so I I really uh, like I said I appreciate you having us on here uh, one last thing I want to say is um, I, uh, I I read a lot of motivational books by Zig Ziglar and um, Zig Ziglar for anybody who's familiar with him uh, at his one of his most famous sayings was "I'll see you at the top." It was one of the, probably one of the first uh, big bestsellers that he wrote, and um, you know I, I truly believe that um, your dad made it to the top. I mean he he lived his life, he squeezed every ounce of life out of life that he could, and um, and uh, if there was ever a winner in this life, it was your dad, and uh, I feel blessed. Uh, very much so to have known him. So, so uh, thanks everyone uh, for uh, having me here and uh, hope you all have a great day. Thanks, doctor. Yeah, I kind of don't really feel disappointed that my dad didn't make it to 121 or even 105. You know, 
statistically, men who lose their wives and don't remarry don't usually live all that long, but he lived over 27 years. And so I really can't blame him for wanting to, to go on and, and be reunited with mom. And if you believe in an afterlife at all, you have to believe that there was one heck of a reunion on December 21st, plus Christmas holiday. Their anniversary was on January 12th. Uh, I wouldn't have been surprised to, to hear thunder here. Anybody else like to join in? I'm, I'm not in <laughs> shape to really talk much. <laughs> but I want to share a photo real quick. Please do. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, this was uh, on one of my, I used to go visit during my February break. And so this was uh, probably the, the last one because last year, Maybe this was last January when I, I came down for the weekend. Um, but uh, <laughs> if a photo is worth a thousand words, that's what I'd like to say. <laughs> that's, that's a good way to remember them right there. Yeah. Thank you for that. Anybody else have anything? I see my manager Roy is on, on here. I would like to thank him for allowing us to use our corporate Zoom accounts over here um, for this. And also for his tolerance over the years, there were so many times when I'd send an email saying, you know, I'm gonna have to leave early today to take my dad to a PHI appointment and save this email because you're going to need it tomorrow again too sometimes. Um, but nobody ever said said a word about it. So I appreciate that. Um, Blue Jay, I was just going to say your, your dad was awesome. I especially enjoyed it when he came out to Fuji and we had, you know, our, our chili, chili days. And uh, so we, everybody come to work, we'd cook chili and everything. And it was just, uh, uh, just a lot of fun. He's just such a, a joyous and humorous man and just really enjoyed uh, getting to know him over the years. And uh, so thank you for sharing him with us, Blue Jay. There was plenty of them to go around. Anybody else? Blue Jay, I'd like to say that uh, in his last, it was, uh, each Christmas, when uh, me and Libby go down to salute of Christmas, well, just the last few years when he was at Bangston, uh, it was always a highlight to, when we're coming back up to swing in and uh, stop and see him. And even uh, last Christmas, we were with him. It just tickled me how he had run the things like a clock. Didn't matter company or not, come 10 to 5, we're going to go eat. You know, it's time for supper. So, you know, he'd look at, he'd point at that watch and, you know, he'd look me and Libby and say, all right, well, I got to get on up to the dining hall. So we'd walk out with him. And, uh, but he's greatly missed. Yes. Thanks, Bruce. Uh Anybody else? Blue Jay, do you remember the chimes he made when he was in Florida? Oh yeah, the door chimes. The door chimes. Yep. Yeah, I, yep. I think there's one around here. Still one around here somewhere. Yeah, I, I know I've got one sitting on the door just down the hall over here. Yeah. In fact.
This is one he made right here. Door harps there. Door harps, called. right. Yeah. Hanging on the door, and then when you open and close the door, it gets all musical for you. He made an awful lot of them. He did. Yep. Gave them all away, too, except that one. I guess you could say he gave it to me. I'm glad he gave you one and didn't give them all away. <laughs> yeah. And that one's got birds on it, too, so maybe that's appropriate. It's blue. And it's blue, yep. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, cousin Tom, um, this I'm gonna remember this forever. Mm -hmm. This was so it so many memories. I still have vivid memories of your house back in East Patterson <laughs> and your mom cooking in the kitchen. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. Uh, green porch we had. And, uh, oh boy, yeah. I still remember that. We had good times. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a great cousin. I love you. You and your sister too. I haven't. Well, I haven't talked to the, you, my, you both, three of you, for a long time. Mm -hmm. But this this is great. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. Welcome, Blue Jay. My my screen is frozen and I can't see anybody. <laughs> we'll we'll get you the recording after. Oh, okay. All right. Usually, if you just give it a little time, the internet will kick back in. Yeah. Oh, it's not. It's wait for a while. We we've been seeing you and hearing you all along, so that much has been working. How will we be able to get copies? Um, I'll see. This. I'll send out an email with a link um, as well as post it on my blog at wildcorvid.org. Um, everything will be be there. Um, there's also um, also there there's a link to my dad's military history. So if you want to read his, his experiences in his own words, that's there. Um, on the right hand side of the page, there's a little section of World War II links. And the very first one there is um, what he wrote. There's also a link there to the video uh, of him giving that talk at the local elementary school. Um, so feel free to take a look at that. Um, yeah, since he's on the internet like that, he'll always be remembered one way or another. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Can I say hi to Alice too? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Who are you? <laughs> <That's> Kathy. <laughs> oh, Kathy. Okay, I, I, I can't see who's talking. I, I'm oh, okay. frozen. <laughs> I thought maybe you forgot that I was your cousin. <laughs> no, I, I, I got that. That went off in my brain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this has been so wonderful. So wonderful. Yeah, maybe we can put something together on a regular basis. Get the family together like this. Nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. That would be great because we're all over the place, aren't we? Yep, we are. Yeah. And especially right now, you can't travel, so. Yeah. It's the next best thing. So, great. Well, I appreciate being here. We're glad you could make it. Yeah. Would you oh. one more uh, photo? Go ahead. <laughs> it's a follow-up. Now you, I know you said he, he usually had other people in his photos, but I, I was searching for this one because I distinctly remembered, well, okay, there's someone in the background, but I'll stop talking and just let you see it. <laughs> I don't know why I have all the silly photos, but... <laughs> Is that is that the Papa bunny that had all those baby bunnies? <laughs> I, I think maybe that rabbit DNA just kind of wore wore off on them. And I see this was during the uh, still during the railroad phase. Yep. Got the train set up on the table back there. Yep. <laughs> For a while he was doing model railroading, yeah. and eventually it got to where. He, Finding all those little small pieces was just too much of a problem. But. 
I well, hear he did puzzles, right? In in the home there, didn't he do jigsaw puzzles? Yep. Yeah, oh yeah. A lot of jigsaw puzzles and <laughs> a lot of them ended up being glued together and framed and hung on the wall there. Cool. I also remember coming down, Blue Jay, and making your mother's lasagna recipe and doing a salad and that was always so much fun too but i'm gonna have to go okay. nice seeing and meeting everybody i love you god bless you stay safe thank you <laughs> thank you for coming anybody else okay i'm done okay Going once, going twice. Okay. As I said, there'll be refreshments in your kitchen, so please feel free to, to help yourself. No, I'm going out to shoveling snow. <laughs> we yeah. Had, we had about two feet the other day, and now it's snowing again. <laughs> Wonderful. So, Cassie, where do you live? I'm in Ringwood, New Jersey. Oh, New Jersey. Yeah, my I have a daughter in Pennsylvania, and they're shoveling too. So. Oh, it's it's crazy. Still shoveling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, have to exercise. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, like I said, I'll uh, post on my blog the uh, as well as I'll send out an email with a link to the video when I get it posted. Probably be the next couple or three days or so. And I thank you all for coming. Oh, good job, Tom. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Hey, Blue Jay, would you mind before we end, if I, if I close this out in prayer? Please. All right. Lord, help us to know that what is important in this life and to live for you alone. We ask that you would comfort us, uh, comfort those especially who are grieving, comfort their blessed uh, grieving hearts and bless the memories, um, the memories of the dear loved one, uh, Vince Animitz. And we do ask this in, in Jesus' wonderful and precious name. And uh, Blue Jay, if you don't mind, I just wanted to share something. Um, and then I'll, uh, I'll give what's called a benediction to close us out in God's word. But as I was listening to everybody talk and listening to uh, the life of uh, Vince Adamitz, um, well, one thing I picked up, um, Blue Jay, for the longest time and knowing him at work, never I never knew his name was Thomas because, of course, it's hidden as Blue Jay. Everybody knows him as Blue Jay. Uh, so I did learn his name was P Thomas. So now I'm starting to wonder, hmm, I wonder how upset he would get if I called him Tommy. Uh, but uh, one of the things I thought of, though, Blue Jay, was uh, Vinny's kid. And, uh, and you said that that was an honor, you, an honor for you to wear that title. And I would say from what I've heard and what I've uh, been able to gather, uh, just in getting to know uh, Blue Jay and um, yeah, it is. That is that is an honor to have that name, Vinny's kid. Um, the the three things that I've really picked up on, and it was kind of a three. I, I'd love to do things this way. The three H's. Um, he was a humble man. He was a humorous man, and he was an honorable man. And uh, the things that I picked up from that, I've also seen that that is also a legacy uh, that Blue Jays picked up, and uh, I've seen that with what Alice has shared as well. Um, that they have uh, they have inherited those uh, those attributes, so to speak, and uh, it's just amazing to see a family that is so impacted by a man who was just a truly humbled man, uh, who man a man who could find humor, uh, and a man who was uh, very honorable in the life that he lived. And, uh, and I, I thank you again, Blue Jay, for allowing me to have this opportunity to to be a part of this and. Uh, to be a part of remembering this and uh and if and if you're okay with it um could i close us out with uh, reading a scripture would that be Please okay? do. do not fear for i am with you do not be afraid for i am your god i will strengthen you i will help you i will hold on to you with my righteous right hand and this is a scripture reading from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Thank you again, Blue Jay. Thank you for this honor. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming.
Thank you. Bye. Thank you.